Certainly. Good evening, Mr. Rickerman, Mr. McDowell, Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Mr. Davis. Here. Mayor Benjamin. Aye, ma'am. Thank you. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I recognize. All right. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Good job, fellas. They were nervous. Great job, young man. Great job. Reverend McDowell, you have a recognition? Yes. Um, I'd like to introduce Dr. Thurman Bowen, the pastor of the Trinity Baptist Church on Richland Street. He's going to come now and rend our invocation. Dr. Bowen. Pastor, how are you? Doing just fine, Mayor. Uh, was thinking, Mayor, as I'm prepared to do the prayer that I've been the pastor of the Trinity Baptist Church for 21 years, and in my meetings, I have our monthly meetings, our quarterly meetings, and we don't have anyone there. And whenever there's a large amount of people in my quarterly <laughs> meetings, that tells me that something is so wrong. Good, Lord. And so we're going to pray to all these many people in this meeting that we will come through <sighs> in a fine, fine manner. Amen. Let us Amen. pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for, for this awesome opportunity to come together and reason together. And, and that, dear Lord, that you might address the concerns of your people. Lord, we pray now that you would give this, this, this council board wisdom and give them knowledge. And, and these, these concerned citizens, we pray that you would give them understanding, that you would be in the mix. Not only are you a God um, that's over this country and this nation, but Lord, we pray that you'll be a God that will rule, rest, and abide within mm. this meeting. That, dear Lord, that you will assure the people that, that you're still strong, that you're still God. And we thank you, dear Lord, for this leadership. I guide them in a way, dear Lord, that will surpass all understanding. One in a way that will certainly be designed to look for the needs of the people. Mm. And so we pray, dear Lord, that, 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 that this will be the very thing that will be done on this night. So calm them down, calm us down, and let us reason together. Mm. And we pray for your presence, your spirit. In the mighty, mighty, matchless name of Jesus, the risen Christ, we do pray. Let us say amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Hey, um, I'm City Manager. Yes, um, sir. We're going to move to adopt the agenda with the, it, it's, Pastor, it's amazing you, uh, you referenced the prophet Isaiah, come let us reason together. We were just talking about that in the back room. And, um, Due consideration discussion with the neighbors in the Vista, the Vista Neighbor Association, and the um, and the uh, developers. We're going to um, uh, move to defer item 41 for two weeks uh, uh, in in the interest of, of everyone talking together again. We actually I thought had a, a good and productive meeting last time. We need to see more of that, and that's something that's incredibly important uh, to uh, Reverend McDowell. And um, make it clear we're going we're to act on this in two weeks. Uh, we're not going to talk about it anymore. So uh, let's let's see if we can get some some uh, um, some good discussion. So I'm not sure if it's prudent now or, or, or after approving the agenda, but we can approve the agenda with the deferral of this for uh, for two weeks. All right. All right. Uh, so that, that is the motion. That's a motion by Mr. McDowell. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Davis. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Aye. Mr. Duvall? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right. Thank uh, you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. At this time, we would ask for any public input related to the agenda items as outlined. No, um, it's important that we, um, I do want to make sure it's clear, some of, some of you were here early at the work session. We're not going to be voting on the health care plan tonight. Uh, what we determined uh, to do is we are going to move forward with the, with the, with the budget. 
Uh, and uh, the budget's going to set out some, some fairly uh, uh, clear financial parameters that we're going to have to back into. What, that, what the health care plan looks like uh, going forward is something we're going to continue to dialogue. I'm not sure if we got a clear date um, uh, as the, the question that um, Howard asked earlier about when we'd have to make some decisions, but uh, 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 some of our uh, leaders of the CFFA and, and others offered to, to help and sit around a table as we fashion what that plan looks like within uh, the parameters of what we know we need to do financially to manage our long-term act share or liability. We're going, we're going to do that. Uh, but um, the, the budget, Mr. Mayor, is re or as proposed, yes, is reflective of yes, maintaining the DDB. Absolutely. Oh yeah, we will, we, will, we, will maintain, we, will main, we will maintain the DDB. We must ma maintain the DDB. For those of you who are paying attention uh, to, to the financial side of this, if we do not maintain a defined dollar benefit, then our long-term act share or liability will balloon. It will, it will balloon. It will, it will uh, uh, climb to $380 million, uh, more than double what it is now. By 2047, it will um, exceed $1 billion. It's not sustainable. Not sustainable, and we have to continue to adjust accordingly to meet just demands of the market. We're also going to have to make sure that we step up and really start pushing um, uh, some hard and fast requirements around our health and wellness initiatives, participation in those initiatives, looking at biometric screening, making sure that we can catch chronic conditions early on. There's a whole lot more that we're all going to have to do to make sure we keep our, our eyes on, on, on cost. But yes, we are going to maintain the DDB. Uh, and we're going to um, make sure that uh, our employee uh, premiums are, are re reflect the 80-20 uh, uh, split that we discuss. Uh, but we won't be voting on the, on the specifics of our plan tonight, and that, that's just important. I know some of you obviously have other things that you need to be doing, but we won't be, won't be doing that tonight. Uh, comp, the, Mrs. Benjamin's presentation she gave today is available online? Yes, already? Sir. All right. If and it isn't already, it will be. Yeah, and if there's some way, it might even be prudent. It's already. It, yeah, and it might be prudent as well. You can go online to the ColumbiaSC.net, but maybe if there's some way in which we can maybe just send it out uh, to all existing employees and, and ha will. whatever whatever network exists to send it out to uh, retirees, let's make sure it gets out there so we people can can pour pour through it in a, in a more personal manner. Um, Ms. Devine. If there are no, um, if there's no other input, Mr. Mayor, related yes, to these agenda items, we would ask council to approve the consent agenda items nine through 29. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Ms. Devine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. We would ask that as you depart, if you would please keep it down just a tad bit. <laughs> All right. All right. Um. Ms. De Ms. Uh, Madam City Manager. Our first presentation, Mr. Mayor, is the recognition of Mr. Robert Harris as the Richland School District 1 Teacher of the Year, the Honorable Tamika Isaac Devine, to make the presentation. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, I just wanted to, um, uh, couldn't let the school year end without recognizing Mr. Robert Harris. Um, uh, Mr. Harris is the Richland 1 Teacher of the Year. He also was a finalist for the state. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. He also was a finalist for the State Teacher of the Year. Um, and although he did not bring that recognition back to Columbia, um, we know that we are so lucky to have Mr. Harris in Richland One teaching our students. He is a teacher at Hand Middle School. Um, and uh, Mr. Mayor, he is so innovative. Um, I just I watch I follow him on Twitter and I see the things that he does with his students and um, he certainly is a rising star in not just in education but just I, I think in this state and he is framing the minds of our young leaders and and we just couldn't be prouder so um, if he would come forward and council has a small presentation for you
wish it wasn't. Good evening. I would just like to thank you all um, for the recognition this evening. Thank you all for honoring me on tonight. And I, from, on behalf of Richland County School District 1, I would like to thank you all for your hard work and your commitment and dedication to education in, in Columbia and in Richland County. So again, thank you all so much, and I appreciate all the hard work you all do every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good you luck. Great work. Appreciate it. Our next presentation is a Business Spotlight Honoree Recognition and Proclamation. Ms. Melissa Lindler, Director of the Office of Business Opportunities. I'm a little short. <laughs> is that good? Okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, tonight what we want to do is recognize Need a Lift Transportation Services as our 2018 quarterly Business Spotlight Honoree. We actually recognized her at during our small business conference that was held on May 3rd this year, our largest one yet for the city. But we also went and make sure we brought her before council so you would have a chance to meet her and hear about all the great things that she's doing. Um, Need a Lift Transportation Services has been in existence since March 2nd, 20, 2007. So for the past 11 years, she's been providing safe, reliable transportation services to the school districts, both Richland 1 and Richland 2 after school programs, pick up, drop off, doctor's appointments. And she also does great um, community, I'm sorry, say your name, sorry. Um, community outreach. Um, she's very supportive and active in her community. Um, she has provided um, in-kind support to schools, community organizations, charitable organizations, as well as sponsoring 40 families to participate in the Warrior Warehouse Project. So we're excited that she's here today. And we have a very brief video right. to talk a little, to show a little bit more about what she does. And she's here with us and her staff. So. Nina Live Transportation Services LLC is located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are a premier transportation services for families on the go. I started Need a Lift in 2015 because I as a parent needed a lift, needed someone to pick my children up from school and allow me to be at work. So Need a Lift provides transportation to and from school and after school programs and summer programs and activities for children ages K through college age students. We also provide transportation for adults and senior citizens. Need a Lift serves families, schools, nonprofits, and government agencies throughout the Midlands. We provide transportation for school, after school activities, field trips, group leisure trips, special events, jobs, and internships for our high school students. We also provide transportation for doc to doctor's appointments and also for community sponsored and corporate events. Why choose Need a Lift? We are a safe, trusted, and reliable transportation for families on the go. You can find us, Need a Lift, at www.needaliftsc.com. You may also email us at info at needaliftsc.com. And please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. At Need a Lift, we would like to thank the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, our parents, our clients, nonprofit organizations that we serve. Thank you for patronizing Need a Lift. Ms. Lucinta D. Lewis Ellis and her employees here with us today. She brought a bunch of people with her to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> her stuff. Oh, wow. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Melissa. Um, with the Need to Lift team, please stand. Yay. <laughs> I am a firm believer that um, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> so, without the Need to Lift family, we would not be able to serve our community. I want to say thank you for the opportunity to be, um, be here to present Need a Lift. Um, also, we are so grateful for the opportunity to serve our families in the community. We're um, even honored to work with nonprofits and different agencies throughout um, Columbia and South Carolina. So thank you. I absolutely appreciate the opportunity. Thank well, you. Lucenta, thank you. And um, um, obviously, you're a wonderful entrepreneur. Family of entrepreneurs do a lot of uh, great business in and around the city. 
but I think it pales in comparison to the community work you do and the community leadership you provide. And we think that's obviously the real sign of a great corporate citizen. So thank you for all you do. And this is, um, we're proud to uh, recognize you as the Business Spotlight Honoree uh, of the quarter. Thank you. And Lucinta, one of the things you didn't mention, the mayor mentioned your community service, but you also have, you've started something called Gift to Lift, so that if somebody has a, a senior or a child um, that might need transportation, um, that they can, people can gift a lift as well. So that's a plus as well. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ms. Devon. Our next item is the recognition of Kaufman Road Elementary School as the 2018 Spring Clean Stream Columbia Award, Clean Stream Columbia Award recipient, Ms. Dana Higgins, Engineering Director for Columbia Water. Maybe not. All right. All right. That looked like hey. Dana. Hello, Ms. Higgins. How are you? Oh, hi, Dana. No. <laughs> this place is Dana. Hey, Mike Jaspers, stormwater manager. Um, City of Columbia and Columbia Water would like to present the uh, Clean Stream Columbia Award for 2018 to Kaufman Road. Make sure you put the mic up. Mike. Put the mic up, Mike. Kaufman Road Elementary School. Um, they've installed and they've already started installing and will continue to install an uh, interactive children's garden. It includes. Um, uh, vegetable garden and composting area. It uses rain barrels to harvest rainwater in order to water the plants. So um, we encourage this because it uses stormwater as a resource and it um, reduces stormwater runoff and erosion from the property. So we'd like to present this award uh, to them. We have Ms. Um, Karen Oaken, the assistant administrator. Amber Melbourne, the parent volunteer, and Sean Hall, the school principal, all here with us. Yay. All right. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. Can we grab a photo together? Let's, 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 yeah, please. I mean. Manager. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. At this time, we will move into a budget public hearing. Um, Ms. Missy Kaufman, our budget and program management director, will come forward as um, we do an initial presentation, um, incorporating into these items, Mr. Mayor, in your first reading, again, um, the effort to uh, maintain the DDB 
and keep the 80-20 cost share reflective of uh, health insurance. Um, at the right time, I will read items 34 um, into the record. Please do. Um, I'm sorry, I'll open up for public hearing? Yes, sir. All right, um, Missy, you want to present first? Good evening. have a copy of the presentation. There's copies available in the back if anyone would like a copy. So today we are here to talk to you about the FY 2018-2019 proposed budget for the City of Columbia. We will be discussing the general fund, our enterprise funds, special revenues, and, ca and the capital improvement program for um, our enterprise funds this year. The total budget for the operating budget for the City of Columbia is $346 million. This comprises the general fund, parking fund, stormwater, water and sewer, and hospitality and accommodations tax. These are just our water, this is just our operating funds, not the capital improvement, improvement program. It, this represents a 5% increase over the current year budget for our total operations. The budget development goals for this year included um, a resilient budget, being able to provide services today um, in preparing for the long term. That it means ensuring that services will continue and that the city will operate within its means. This also means reevaluating priorities and programs in order to free up and reallocate resources as well as identify new resources to help launch new programs to tackle emerging challenges and enhance current programs that need additional resources. A balanced budget, sustainability is our next, next goal and that's moving beyond just a budget that is balanced. A balanced budget is required by law. A sustainable budget is a choice and seeks to establish spending and reserve practices that are sustainable. Providing quality services. Providing high quality municipal services efficiently and effectively and responsi responsibly is a basis for why we are here. Providing high quality services is uh, to do what requires also mean that we invest in our employees and infrastructure and maximize overall organizational efficiency. The $346 million operating budget for the city um, builds on the city's efforts to responsibly meet the residents' basic needs for municipal services, while at the same time introducing creative and innovative ways to deliver services that meet the goals of Envision Columbia Street Strategic Plan. I know it's hard to see from here, but our, this budget includes services for over 133,000 residents, um, over 5,000 businesses, 2,400 employees, it also includes our water, um, water and wastewater operations, um, our two um, water plants and our wastewater plants, along with many other um, infrastructure and facilities that are provided by the city. Envision Columbia, just as a reminder as well for our, our, our budget development, is influenced by the Envision Columbia focus, seven focus areas and five goals. We'll move right into the general fund. The general fund budget is in balance. It's 148 million. It's an increase of 5.4 million or 4% over the current year. It's being proposed without a, rate, a property tax increase. This budget reflects funding to maintain current new minimum service levels. Growth is limited to increases for cost of operations, general inflation, state retirement rates, employee merit program, capital replacements, and annualized costs for previously established programs. Looking at general fund revenues, revenues total $129.3 million, an increase of 2.6 or 2% over the current year. The largest increase is that from property tax revenues based on growth in our assessments. Transfers in include capital lease proceeds of $8 million, which is increased to reflect annual target amount of $8 million. Um, and there's also a use of fund balance of $1.7 million, right at $1.8. It's a reduction of $1.2 from the current year. And that is in part to help us support our goal of financial sustainability. General fund departments total 124 million, which represents an increase of 1.2 million. The general fund includes the community, department, community development department, uh, the general fund portion of it, fire, general services, general government, office of business opportunities, parks, recreation, police, and public works. General government encompasses public uh, finance, administration, um, IT, general services, and other, other operations that support um, our basic services. 
As you can see, the largest portion of the general fund budget is our public safety. In addition to our departments, um, what also makes up the general fund is our non-departmental totals, which is 6.3 million. That includes our lease payment for the capital lease uh, replacement program. It also has that we are maintaining our current levels of funding for the external agencies of 1.9 million. That includes the Alvin Escalin Detention Center of 600,000, public defender of 100,000, solicitor at 215, and the homeless services contracts is maintained at 1 million. Transfers out total 17.8, which is a 3.2 million increase, or 22%. That increase is really attributed to, and I've repeated it, I know, several times with regards to the 8 million in our capital lease program. Um, that program includes replacement of over 60 vehicles and heavy equipment, includes items such as a replacement ladder truck, a reserve engine, three side loader trash trucks, and 22 patrol cars. Of course, there's many more items than that, but those are some of the higher um, ticketed items in that program. That, mil that uh, $8 million is a $4 million increase over the current year, but $8 million is what we have projected as a need for, um, for, for multiple years going forward. There's more than, of that $8 million, more than $5 million is for funding for police and fire equipment. The budget for this year does not include any funding for general capital projects. That would be the um, CIP for the general fund um, in our city facilities. Representatively, just to demonstrate the property, the general fund revenues, 41% of a dollar in this instance would be uh, attributed from property tax. The next largest percentage would come from licenses and permits. Expenditure-wise, the largest portion, again, goes to public safety. Next would be public works and parks and recreation. Moving on to our enterprise funds. Enterprise funds include our water and sewer operations, our stormwater operations, and our parking fund. We'll start first with the water and sewer operating fund. This budget is $161.9 million and is an increase of $9 million or 6% over the current year. It does include a proposing of a 9.76% increase. Revenue increase is applied both to the water and the sewer side. And the revenues generated from this increase are applied to funding the operations and the capital obligations. It's a balanced approach to meeting the utility operations for both operating and capital. And of course, it seeks to maintain the TET target debt service coverage ratio of 2%. 60% of the revenues that come in for the water and sewer system come from water sales, and 38% come from sewer sales. Percentage-wise, looking at the overall departments, but the budget for the water and sewer system, operating departments make up 58% of the total budget, next followed by debt service. The chart on the right, the um, pie chart on the right with department's budgets demonstrates that 71% of all de of the department's budget uses for our utility budget funding, utility funding. That would incorporate the, um, the water treatment plant, the wastewater treatment plant, the operations, and the other um, staffing that is associated with maintaining of the system. Water and sewer budget again is proposed at 161.9 million. Um, just to point out that the capital improvement program is 120 million. It includes uh, the, the operating budget includes a transfer of 21.5 million from operations to the CIP. And the remainder of the funding for the total CIP, which is in addition to the operating budget, is fund coming from um, bond proceeds. The stormwater budget revenues um, come primarily from um, almost entirely come from the, the stormwater fees. Expenditure-wise, um, there are several different departments that make up the stormwater fund, including public works, which includes storm drains, um, and those folks who uh, maintain and help construct storm drain infrastructure, the engineering services, and then, um, of course, now with the um, uh, debt program for the stormwater program, we do have a reserve that's required, and then we have debt service, of course, that covers. Get some slides. Jumped a little bit. Okay, so here's the. This is the impact of the utility bill increases on a on a, um, a residential customer average use. The 9.7 percent increase reflects about five dollars and thirty six cents per month increase based on um, an average use of eight thousand eight hundred cubic feet, or right at about six thousand gallons a month. Most of that being sewer, not not. That's water, water and sewer. Combined. So most of that, the vast most majority of that being correct. sewer. 
right? Yeah. yeah, not water. Right. And then looking at the city's water and sewer rates in comparison to our counterparts, we still remain some of the lowest in the region. And the existing rates are just uh, uh, compared to the proposed rates, keeps us still in that same line. Sorry, these, storm, these slides got a little out of place. So the stormwater budget is proposed at 13.4 million. It's an increase of 836,000, or 6.6% .6 over the current year. It reflects the continued pro, um, um, proposed rate increases for the stormwater, the aggressive stormwater program that um, was uh, adopted last year. The rate increase is uh, 74 cents per uh, equivalent residential unit, um, basically per month on a residential property. So the fee will go from 1180 to 1254 per month. The total capital improvement program for the waste for the stormwater system is 11.3 million. That increase helps to fund the CIP program for um, the stormwater system as well as the um, the total 93 million that is proposed over the next nine, uh, three to five years. Some of the activities that have occurred um, to move that program forward is the hiring of a program manager in March, and the bond ordinance for the first 50 million dollar issue was approved in April. Moving on to the parking fund, revenues for the parking fund um, come primarily from street meters, our garages and lots, and then non-moving violations. Those would be those uh, parking tickets that we're all occasionally subject to receiving. Uh, Expenditure-wise, parking services um, makes up the largest portion, which those would be the uh, folks that help operate the, the parking system. Debt service carries also a large portion of the budget, and then next would be parking facilities. Those are the maintenance of the, of the parking garages and facilities. The proposed budget is 8.6 million and is increased of 684 or 9% over the current year. As mentioned, the revenues come from parking garages, lots, and non-moving violations. Um, the increase is coming primarily from the passport parking system in addition to new and enforced parking service contracts. Department's budgets total 4.9 million or right at 5 million, which is an increase of 678,000 or 16%. It does include two additional positions and the addition of an annual the, cap, the contract for the passport um, program. Uh, some of the activities will include painting of at least one garage um, and then uh, um, routine cleaning of all the garages scheduled and maintenance. And of course, um, part of the operations will include partnering with economic development to assist with attracting businesses to downtown. Next, we have our special revenues. This includes the hospitality tax budget, which is proposed at $12.1 it's about an increase of 557,000 or right at 5% over the current year and is in line with prior year collections. Revenue collections to date are in line with these projections that we've made, um, so we're comfortable that this, um, these revenue, we will see this growth in the 18-19 year compared to where we are with collections for 17-18. Just to um, reiterate on the pro uh, proposed hospitality tax budget, this includes just the budget, it does not make allocations within the allocation, with, within the line items or with the, um, um, agencies that are being funded. This is just the uh, total amount of the budget that is being requested for adoption. Accommodations tax is total of 2.5 million, right at 2.6. It's an increase of approximately 370,000 or 16.6 percent over the current year, with a 4 percent increase over the 16-17 actuals. Um, we are a little more aggressive in our collection projections for this next year, just based on what we have been seeing in terms of collections coming in from the accommodations tax. Those revenues are, are generated um, and uh, received by the state of South Carolina and redistributed to the city. There is obviously some limitations on how those funds could be spent, as there are with also with hospitality tax funds. 25,000 can go to the general fund, 30% for advertising and promotion of tourism, 65 for tourism related expenditures, and then 5% for general fund purposes or general purposes. Again, those allocations are not uh, made in this budget, it just assumes the uh, it's just request for t approval of the total budget as, as um, submitted. Finally, we have our capital improvement program for um, our enterprise funds, which would include wa water and wastewater as well as stormwater. The CIP for 18-19 for wastewater is, um, the total CIP is $120 million for both water and wastewater, of which $80 million is for, for uh, wastewater and $40 million is for sewer. Of that, of that program, 31% um, is for capacity-related projects, 40% is for rehab-related projects, the other is for tr uh, treatment plant, utility relocation, and then other. 
on the water system side, the uh, meter system improvements is 70%. That would include the AMI and AMR applications, as well as relocation for SEDOT um, utility relocations, system expansion, and then um, water quality. As mentioned previously, the sewer, the water and sewer CIP is funded with 21.5 million in the operating fund transfer from the water and sewer system. The rest will come from bond proceeds. This is, I uh, wasn't really expecting folks to be able to see this map from here, but there are of course copies available of the map and the CIP projects um, is attached to the budget ordinance. This is the water uh, project maps. Uh, here are wastewater. Next, we have the stormwater capital improvement program. Again, it's budgeted 11.3 million. And in looking at the projects, the way we um, categorize these projects for demonstration graphically includes the, where the projects will benefit which branch. 50% uh, will benefit the Rocky Branch system. 14% will get, benefit Gills Creek. 33% Smith Branch and 3% 8 mile. And here is a demonstration of the stormwater project that includes projects from this, this year and the current year. That concludes the budget public hearing. I do want to take time to thank City Council, thank the City Management and City staff, as well as the citizens and input for this process. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, if there's any questions? No. Any, uh, um, this public hearing is open, right? Hey, uh, May I have sorry, one Ms. Just one question uh, for Missy, because um, I know last year we were doing phase one of the AMI, to this year it's two and three. Just uh, realistically, when can citizens start seeing that? It's probably a question. We'll defer to the project managers on that process. I'm sure they can come up and provide some input. So we, um, we anticipate bringing a, a proposal, a contract to council in September. Um, that is our schedule, propping up the communication network this fall and meters being changed out um, early next year. That's start, uh, starting to change out meters. It's about a three year process. So um, there'll be a three year contract. At the end of that three years, we'll have a communication network. Every residential meter will be replaced We'll be rolling out our, our application where customers can track their water usage. And that soft rollout will begin early next year as well as the meters are deployed. So that's kind of our tentative schedule. Thank you, Clint. Thank you, Clint. All right. Other questions for Missy? So we got a budget, no tax increase, continued investment in clean drinking water, storm water, and wastewater improvements, and uh, continued investment in other programs that matter. All right, good progress. Uh, anyone from the public have any input on the budget as presented? Is there a motion? Move. Second. Mr. Move. Mayor, would you like me to read? Please, item would you please? Yes, sir. And, and Mr. Mayor, I was advised to just incorporate for the record, again, the health care related um, yes, with the DDB. The ordinance is ordinance number 2018-026 to raise revenue and adopt the budget for the City of Columbia, South Carolina for the <coughs> fiscal year ending June 30, 2019, which will also incorporate uh, Council's uh, motion to in, in maintain the DDB for health care coverage as well as the 80-20 cost share. It's already been moved and seconded. Let's so move into proper second and discussion. Seeing them with the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Ms. Devine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 35, ordinance number 2018-025, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 15, Parks and Recreation, Section 15.5. User fees A definitions 3, D parks 3, insert Keenan House 4, Earlwood Community Building, and 5, Eau Claire Print Building, I athletics fee 4, swimming, J classes, camps, programs, and to add L event vendor fees. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Another previous question, Clerk Cardero. 
Mr. McDowell, Mr. Duvall, Aye. Mr. Vine, Aye. Mr. Davis, Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 36, Ordinance Number 2018-027, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 23, Utilities and Engineering, Article 5, Water and Sewer Rates, Section 23143, Water Service Rates, and Section 23149, Sewer Service Rates, A and B. All right. So move. Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question of Kirk Carter Road. Mr. McDowell, Mr. Duvall, Aye. Mr. Vine, Aye. Mr. Davis, Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Mayor Benjamin, item 37, I would ask that you open another public hearing regarding resolution number R2018037 in support of the issuance of the South Carolina Jobs Economic Development Authority of its revenue bonds or notes, Columbia International University, in one or more series in one or more years pursuant to the provisions of Title 41, Chapter 43 of the Code of Laws of South Carolina, 1976, as amended in the aggregate principal amount of not exceeding $10 million. All right. Move to approve. All right. We got a, uh, well, is that second? Second. You can't move and second. Yes, I did. Second. <laughs> <laughs> it, it must be in District 1. <laughs> uh, those, are, those are the rules north of Elmwood Avenue. Is anyone from the public who wants to speak in favor of or against this? All right. All right. Um, we'll Vote move to the approve. previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Aye. 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 Item 38, an ordinance second reading, ordinance number 2018-022, consenting to the inclusion of property in a multi-county industrial business park, Project Rain, 1087 and 1115 Shop Road. I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion, Mr. Duval. Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I am opposed to this Particular, I'm opposed to this because this is another start of tax breaks for student housing in the city of Columbia. This one will give a 33% uh, rate, tax rate cut for student housing. Uh, I think that we struggle to balance our budget each year, and if we continue to give tax breaks to people that will come here anyhow without the tax break, we'll never get out of this hole. Uh, this this developer bought the property, had the property annexed into the city, and until about two weeks ago, we didn't hear anything about asking for a tax break, and now we are looking at giving a tax break. So I, I don't think we should continue down this road of giving tax breaks for student housing. Sure. Um, thank you, Mr. Duvon, and I respectfully uh, will disagree um, prior to the incentive we put on the table a few years ago, there were um, there was only one deal when we put it on the table. It sunsetted. We, we've had a quarter of a million dollars worth of investment in that space that over the next 20 years are going to send um, $100 million to Richmond School District 1. We're going to be able to disagree on policy and, and I think respect for disagree. Uh, but I think this is a, uh, um, this adds 6% uh, commercial property to tax rolls and it's moving in the right direction. But I respect your ability to disagree, Mr. Duval. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Devine. Um, I just want to say I, I, I've actually publicly stated a similar position to Mr. Duval's that um, I felt like it was a good deal when we sunset it, that was going to be it, and I wasn't planning to support any future uh, student housing incentives. However, with this um, project, I know that the county is very interested in that, and, and in light of us working together with them to continue to to develop our city, I, I will support it. But I also want to say, and I've asked um, Ms. Wilson and Ms. Knox and Ms. Saeed uh, to meet with me in the coming weeks. Um, I, I plan to bring forward um, some proposals for um, similar incentives for affordable housing or mixed-use housing and workforce housing within our city. We've talked about it for a while. We've we've not um, put anything on the table, and so um, I am going to support this in. Um, in anticipation that we will do the same very shortly for some other areas of our city uh, for some citizens who really need some quality of uh, workforce housing. Let's put it on the next, on the next agenda if we can. We'll move the previous question, Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell. 
Mr. Duvall. No. Mr. Vaughn. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, ordinances first reading, ordinance number 2018-023, granting an encroachment to the East Lake Homeowners Association for installation and maintenance of a wooden privacy fence within the right of way of the 100 block of Fountain Lake Way adjacent to properties located at 124 Pine Mass Court, 128, 132, 136, 140, 144, 148, 152 and 156 Pine Mass Court, Richland so County. Second. In discussion. The previous question, Kurt Carterell. Mr. McDowell. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 40, ordinance number 2018-028, granting an encroachment to the city partner city center partnership for installation and maintenance of a steel bicycle repair stand within the right-of-way area of the 1300 block of Main so Street. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Those were the most detailed plans I've ever seen for a bicycle repair rack. <laughs> Took up about 16 pages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We um, move the previous question. Kurt Calderon. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 42, resolution number R-2018-044, certifying the Robinson Building as an abandoned building pursuant to the South Carolina Abandoned Buildings Revitalization Act. So move. A second. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question on court call the roll. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Item 43, resolution number R-2018-045, certifying the Marks building as an abandoned building pursuant to the South Carolina I Abandoned move Buildings. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Call roll. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. How would say I? <laughs> Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Council will be moving into a period of appointments. Um, Ms. Belton may come forward to assist on items 44 and 46. Item 44 being the appointment of two individuals to the Columbia Museum of Art Commission. I got your people. You got yours. Wendell Brown. And item 46 is the appointment of four individuals to the Planning Commission. All right, all right, um, Art Museum, Mr. Um, I, I'm uh, recommending Mr. Wendell Brown, Wendell Brown. All right. Let's, um, let's move forward with that, with that one nomination uh, right now. And is that okay with you? Uh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's uh, uh, move forward with him to fill the uh, resigned term of Mr. Rogers and hold off on the other one. All right? All right. I would move, um, let, let's keep that one open. Let's um, do uh, Brenda Wheeler um, as a second appointee. Um, and Ms. Ms. Belton, we've got um, Catherine Davis. Uh, we, we already moved that one. So Wendell Brown and uh, Brenda Wheeler. I just want to add Catherine Davis is on here, but she's expiring and she's already served two terms. So uh, according to our policy, she's not eligible for reappointment. But I don't want the same thing to happen um, that happened with another point, appointee that they said they felt like they were just kicked off. So I think somebody needs to communicate with Ms. Davis and, and we need to recognize her and thank her for her service for the two terms, but make sure she understands she wasn't eligible for reappointment. All right, so that was... Um, Wendell Brown. That was, that was uh, yeah. Um, move the previous question, Kurt Carl Rowe. Mr. McDowell. Mr. Duvall, Mr. Vine, Aye. Mr. Davis, Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Sorry, one more on that. Um, Ms. Brown, if maybe we could talk to 
um, the uh, leadership over at Columbia Museum of Art. I do know Ms. Davis has been heading up um, their, their African American re, um, outreach and that whole component. I'm not sure if there's an ability for her to serve in that as ex officio or if there's an ability for us to kind of keep her in that because I think she's done an amazing job with that outreach and some of the programming they've had recently and I'd hate to lose that. Okay. We'll talk to her. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Vidal, has a, you have a motion on judges? Associate Municipal Judges with the term of four years and Brian Jeffries as a substitute Associate Municipal Judge with a term of two years. I move also to appoint Christy Grafton Goldberg as an Associate Municipal Judge with a term of four years and Richard Morgan as a substitute associate municipal judge with a term of two years. All appointments are effective July 1, 2018. There's a second. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Devine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Um, and I would move to appoint um, Judge Steedley Bogan as Chief Administrative Judge for the Municipal Court of the City of Columbia for a term beginning July 1st, 2018. Uh, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right. Uh, Planning Commission, I move the reappointment of April Glenn James, the reappointment of Richard Cohn for a final term, uh, the appointment of Issa Mandel, and the appointment of Brian Dauphin to the Planning Commission. Second. Uh, Issa, Issa wasn't already on there? Issa wasn't already on there? Oh, okay. okay. I would second that. Previous question, Kirk, Kirk. I'm sorry. Uh, the East is on the East and Mandel is on the Dr. Mandel is on. She's on the Historic Columbia yes, board. Yes, but she understands that she cannot serve. On both. Okay. Yes, yeah, she cannot serve on both. Yes. Exactly, she cannot. Which will now have a vacancy on Historic Columbia, I guess. Okay. So, uh, Rick Cohn, Rick Cohn, Cohn James, James, Mandel, and Do Dolphin. Is I think it's actually Dolphin. Move, Mr. Mayor. All right. All right. Moving second. Discussion. Okay. Move the previous question. Kirk, call the roll. Is that an issue? Did you have something? You need some clarity? <coughs> Mr. It sounds like we need some clarity. Okay. <laughs> no? Did you need something? You sure? Do we need? No. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. All right. McDowell. All right. We clarified? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. I would just say to reiterate the concerns that we've raised over the last few weeks regarding um, our mainly our land use boards. Um, the, the new members will have to go through training. We need to probably send all members back through training, but um, I think Ms. Hampton, if we could make sure that um, it's communicated to all of our land use boards that um, they are sitting and representing the city of Columbia, they need to hear people out, they need to be respectful, um, and they need to follow the law. Yeah, all right. The, um 
And when do we have, uh, when does DERC and come before us? All right, all right. And Boza, don't we have Boza come? All right, Okay. both, both on, on the 19th? Okay, thank, thank you. Planning. What about all right, are there any items, Madam City Manager, um, from the, uh, well, that's, that's, what about is it? the planning commission on the day? We're done. We're done. Uh, any items, no work session items? Okay, they've all been considered uh, early in the agenda. Any reports or referrals to committee? Move to adjourn. <laughs> any reports or referrals to committee? None. We do have a couple, we do have a couple of citizens who signed to speak on, on items that haven't been previously uh, considered. And if they're still here, I'm gonna ask them to speak, Mr. Ted Holzman. If that's right, Mr. Holzman, want to speak about the H grant issue? Uh, and everyone else here is insurance, healthcare, Huge Street, and maybe a Mr. Mustafa as well. Uh, only two I have signed to speak. Please, the floor is yours for three minutes, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, my name is Ted Holtzman. I'm here on behalf of Dr. Raj Aluri, the founder and directory of the Columbia International Festival, the unique event that defines and promotes who we are as a city, a diverse and vibrant community bringing together people to, from more than 100 cultural groups and showcasing the multicultural nature of our city. So Raj asked me first to voice his appreciation and thanks for your ongoing support uh, over the years to make the in Columbia International Festival possible. And uh, April next year will be the 24th event in this ongoing saga. South Carolina's largest international event and likely the largest in the entire Southeast of the United States. Uh, Raj further asked me to voice his grave concern regarding the tacit statement of low value with which this body has assigned to the festival. Last year it was granted just $22,500, placing it below the, below the 40th most important recipient of H tax grant funding. Members of the council, this seems far out of proportion for an event which uniquely portrays and promotes cultural awareness and mutual appreciation that lead to better community relations between South Carolina's native and foreign born visitors and citizens. So when the time comes to make council allocations, uh, Raj asks that we please put our H tax grant wallet where our mouth is. Assign a dollar value that is commensurate to the value you place on us as a community with all its rich cultural, ethnic, and linguistic diversity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mr. Mustafa. Mayor Benjamin, yes, Councilman, thank you um, for allowing me to uh, speak in front of you. I am uh, Vice President of the Columbia Local Organizing Committee. I'm here on behalf of not only myself, but the community as a whole in regards to racial profiling. Okay. I myself on May 27th was a victim of racial profiling. I went through the protocols, went through all the protocols, I had a meeting today with your chief. And I wasn't pleased. And I told you, Chief, that I will be organizing once my people come from Seattle, Washington, we will be organizing a protest in regards to the city of Columbia Police Department. Okay. Move on, move on with that. There's an issue with young men driving Dodges, Dodge Chargers. They've been targeted. So we need to take a look at that. Young men driving Dodge Chargers. And I'm coming from the community perspective. This is all the complaints. Also, we have an issue with the co-enforcement division in regards to poor people not being able to renovate their house and et cetera. And as a result of that, their house has been taken away from them. So we have another issue also with that. In regards to profiling, if we take a look, when I left from the chief uh, office this morning, I stopped to the traffic court. When you, take a, when you look into the traffic court, the reflection looked like us, okay? Extremely us. That's profiling. It's been a history. The police department in our community has been terrorizing our community over 100 years. And we don't really have a good relationship, a good rampart. We're trying to build one. 
So we ask that you allow the local organizer committee to sit down, because we're grassroots. We're grassroots. So it's time for us to be at the table, and the community has not been at the table. Solutions. When I look at the police officer, where are they from 21 to 30? Where are the Asian, Latinos, and young blacks? We don't have them. Senator Scott, we had to meet with Senator Scott in regards to the Booker T. Washington area over in Colony, in regards to building a community center. Senator Scott stated that he gave the city $307,000 to start this particular community center. We want that community center in that particular area. Our people need it, the young folks need it. In regards to the area of Colony, there's plenty of complaints about the police officer come to Colony with a group of young men when they're walking together, breaking them up, breaking them up. Don't want them walking together. That's our culture. Why can't they walk together? So these are complaints coming from the community. Again, we're grassroots, and we want to be at the table in regards to this particular issue. And I'd like to get with you in regards to my personal issue with racial profiling, so we won't have to bring this public attention all the way from Seattle, Washington. You're welcome to come from Seattle, my friend. Uh, this is the, this is the, we have porous borders, and um, always willing to listen uh, to anyone's complaints. If you if you are uh, in the borders of the United States of America, you're, you're welcome to have your uh, your positions heard. Uh, happy to talk with you. I will tell you that I have incredible confidence in the police chief and the City of Columbia Police Department. I will tell you that it's staffed with hundreds of men and women who are human beings and who will make mistakes sometimes, uh, but indeed have not only been trained well, but also understand the accountability measures that we have in place that we hold every single one of them to. Uh, some of the uh, issues you raise are historical issues regarding law enforcement and people of color in this country, and some of them are, are quite true. Some of the factual uh, um, data regarding diversity at the department and the ways we've been addressing it, uh, we probably need to spend some time talking about it because uh, we've, we've worked closely uh, with the community, uh, with members on our volunteer boards, with the Columbia Urban League to work to aggressively diversify our staff. And I think you'd be impressed with some of the work we've done in terms of transparency and accountability and training. And I'd be happy to, to, to share those with you in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the interest of, of transparency. Yes, Senator Scott did help secure some funding from the state of South Carolina uh, to help address some of our comprehensive plans for the Beltline Corridor, and I'd love to help share those with you. I think you'll be favorably impressed with the plans for this entire 18-acre tract uh, that borders the colony and the formerly the Bethel Bishop uh, uh, neighborhood is now North Point. So, um, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So some fantastic things happen here. So ha be happy to dialogue with you as much as, much as possible. And we can, we can start with in the, in, the, in the interest of transparency and sharing ideas and maybe common experiences and, and always have the ability to, to even agree to disagree. Uh, but, um, but requiring the very best from the men and women who choose to be peace officers in the city of Columbia is something that we'll never ever hedge on. We, we, we will do that. Trying to create an environment where these young men have the opportunity to live up to their God-given potential and they have incredible promise. We've been working to address that. There was a presentation earlier today about some of our efforts in our, in our, in our parks and rec program and some of the investments we're making in, in STEM uh, summer jobs uh, for young people. I've walked through the colony myself and, and, and the bishop passing out flyers, encouraging people to either participate in our free uh, summer camp programs, or um, also some of the paid uh, summer jobs programs. So we, we can let's dialogue a little bit more with that. I think we might find we have a whole lot more in common than we have separating us. Uh, but I will tell you the issues facing uh, young African American men in America are real, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're challenging, and we take them very seriously. Uh, so let's spend some time talking about it, okay? Yeah, yeah and I take it real seriously, because okay. first yeah. and foremost, it should yeah. never even stop me anyway. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We, we can talk about that. I have, I have no, I have no, I have no idea. I will tell you, been there, done that, been there, done that. But let, let's let's talk a little bit more about it. All right. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Take care, young men. All right. All right. All right. Is there a second? Second. And with the previous question, clerk, call the roll. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Yes. Mr. Vine. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Have a good evening. Uh,